If you watch lions or orca coordinating a hunt, or a family of chimpanzees socializing, we as humans can relate to what they're doing. Their calls and their body language aren't all that dissimilar to what we as humans use. But squid and octopus are cephalopods, and estimates are we haven't shared a common ancestor with them for over half a billion years. Yes, that's billion with a B. Fun fact, the word cephalopod literally means head foot. Cephalopod. Which makes a bit of sense, because octopus and squid are basically all head and feet. Well, arms, not feet, but you get the idea. Anyway, many octopus and squid have this incredible ability to change color for camouflage. But they also change color to communicate with each other and other species. Researchers have been trying to figure out what they're saying and how they're saying it since the 1800s. Now let's take all the difficulties of trying to understand cephalopod communication and let's pretend that your study species is fast and aggressive and lives deep in the middle of the open ocean. I've got Ben Burford on the line who's been researching just that. So I'm really interested in your research about Humboldt squid, but just to remind everybody, these aren't just little squids that are splashing around in the shallows, right? These are really incredible animals that I have a lot of respect for. Yeah, the Humboldt squid is an animal that really never comes into contact with the hard surface in its life. It's what we call an open ocean animal. It lives, breeds, and dies way out at sea. Humboldt squid have large eyes and excellent sight, and like all squid, they use jet propulsion to swim. This makes them fast, efficient, and highly effective hunters. But Humboldts live fast and die young, growing to five feet or longer, but only living for around a year. I find it absolutely fascinating that they live in an environment that most humans will never come into contact with. I mean, as much as I'd love to come into contact with the deep sea, it's just not really possible for my own physical body. Yeah, it's also the largest inhabitable space on our planet. I mean, the deep ocean and the open ocean comprise, you know, over 93% of our biosphere, the inhabitable space on our planet. And these are, these are animals that specialize in living in that environment. And trust me, it's an environment that you and I would quickly perish in. <laughs> so I, I understand like other squid, they use colors to communicate with each other. But as we've said, they spend a lot of time in the deep sea where it's basically pitch black. How does that work? The first paper that really described the variety of color patterns that we see in species of deep sea squids came out. And this was a shock. It's not like a coral reef where there's all sorts of structure and color and things like that. No, it's, it's a dimly lit, empty habitat for the most part. And that work really motivated me to think about, well, what do these squid use? They're a little bit different than the classic cephalopod paradigm for communicating with pigmentation patterns. You know, your classic shallow water cephalopod or, or squid is essentially something like words on the page of a book. You need light in order to read them. But Humboldt squid and some other deep living squids we think are slightly different. We think they're more like e-readers. You don't need light to read an e-reader because the words on the e-reader are backlit. I guess I was kind of having a hard time fully understanding how exactly you see something in the dark, um, but kind of backlighting it makes perfect sense. The way that Humboldt squid backlight these patterns has to do with their muscle tissue, which is right beneath their skin. It's just like you or me. And for the Humboldt squid, embedded within their muscle tissue are hundreds and hundreds of these tiny little bioluminescent organs called photophores, like a firefly. That is a photophore that's designed to project light out, like a flashlight. Humboldt squid, on the other hand, they're more designed just to radiate light in the tissue itself. And so you can think of these animals as having like hundreds and hundreds of teeny little Christmas lights sprinkled throughout their muscle tissue that like cause their body to glow. They have regions that we think would be brighter than others based on the density of these photophores. And then it selectively conceals and reveals different parts of a glowing body. We have this image here that's showing 28 different patterns that, that you've observed of these animals communicating with each other in the wild. Can you tell us kind of what's going on with those, those different patterns? That's, that's what what we set out to figure out were any of these patterns associated with certain contexts. A squid trying to catch food or a squid in a super dense group. I mean, these animals live in groups. You rarely find them alone. And so presumably some of these patterns may serve to coordinate their group functions. Living in groups is a, is a huge adaptation for life in the open ocean, you know, where resources are very patchy. These squids may have to search for a long time before they find, say, a food resource. But for a group to work, 
you know, when you find that food resource, perhaps you need some way of conveying your intent or like what you're doing in the moment that you're feeding. Uh, Humboldt squid are highly cannibalistic. Research suggests that they're the most cannibalistic of all cephalopods. They're really aggressive. We actually observed many feeding scenarios where there would be hundreds of squid all just zooming all over the place, catching fish, catching shrimp. And you could think of these patterns kind of like turn signals and brake lights on your car. When you're driving in heavy traffic, which is super, super dangerous, you need to convey to others around you what you're doing. If you wanna change lanes, put on your turn signal first and then change lanes, right? So same idea with the squid. If you're around a whole bunch of two meter long squids that are all very, very hungry and you spot a fish and you're gonna go for it, you might want to convey to the rest of them like, I'm gonna go for this fish. But there's also other things these patterns can be used for too. For instance, camouflage. Simple counter shading is one of the patterns we observe all the time where they're darker on the surface of their body that faces the sun or the surface. I guess my next question is how close do you think we are to understanding exactly what they're quote unquote talking about in these groups? The key thing that we need to do is to establish cause and effect. If presented with a specific color pattern on another squid, how does a squid respond? With Humboldt squid, that'll be a little bit trickier um, because they live in this really hard to access environment down in the deep sea. Being able to project a virtual squid that we have control over its behavior and, and showing the squid to a group of Humboldt squid and then making it do certain behaviors and seeing how they respond, gosh, that would be cool. I'm also curious of what other adaptations they had to make to be able to survive in such a weird environment. This habitat is huge and it's mostly dark and it's also you know, very low in oxygen. In these deep low oxygen layers, it's really common for animals to be small and lethargic, but Humboldt squid, they're kind of an exception. They're really active animals. Uh, they're really muscly, high metabolic demand, yet they have crazy physiological adaptations that allow them to actively hunt and forage in these low oxygen layers and easily catch all these really lethargic prey items <laughs> that are down there. And you'll see these rapid vertical transitions throughout a day. And what's happening is the animal is diving down into the deep low oxygen cold layers, chowing, coming back up to the surface, catching their breath and repeating the process. It's amazing to think that in the deep sea, there are literally millions of Humboldt squid living this fast, aggressive, and as Ben said, often cannibalistic lifestyle, all while continually flashing lights in their muscles and skin to communicate with each other. Who needs science fiction when you got all that going on just a few miles off the coast? <laughs>